No two cultures are more intertwined than that of tattoos and motorcycles. So we head out of Houston. We are on our way to have a day off in New Orleans. I've always wanted to go to New Orleans. Along this journey, Robbie's fender starts acting up again. The weight of this bag that he has on there is now bending and causing the welds to weaken, and his sissy bar contraption that he made isn't holding up. We're coming up over a hill, and as we're coming up over the hill on the highway, I can see smoke coming from Robbie's tire. I start to smell rubber burning. It's not uncommon to smell things like rubber burning when you're on the highway. You smell rubber burning, you smell antifreeze, you smell oil burning. It's just part of being out on a highway in the open air. Red Dog's riding next to me and I ask him, I say, hey man, is, is there something up with my tire? His tire actually looks like it's on fire, it's smoking so bad. His best chance of ever having a blowout is that you can actually slow the bike down, control it, and get it off to the side of the road. After one repair and a half-ass repair, the fender finally had had enough. Get up there, we pull it over, we get off, we look at his bike, and he has got this rut, this like crater all the way around his tire that the bolt from his uh, sissy bar has actually been working into the rubber. I was not going anywhere further. The tire was just shredded. Maybe another quarter mile or so, it could have been devastating. Robbie's tire was on the brink of popping. We were rolling 75, of course, if it was up to them, 90 miles an hour. Absolute worst case scenario, I'll take the whole damn fender off and I'll ride without a fender. Like, I don't care. We're on the side of the road. Robbie's bikes broke down. Red Dog somehow managed to see a Harley dealership. Probably the only motorcycle shop in 100 miles. We were able to limp the bike off to the highway. Jumping through a median and going around and gimping Robbie's bike back to Cowboy Harley Davidson in Beaumont, Texas. When we pull up, man, there's live music. There's a bunch of people outside. I didn't even think we were gonna be able to get a tire or get that fixed. Man, those people there were incredible. They took my bike straight in, went to work on it immediately. Talk about making the best out of a bad situation. I don't know if it was a customer appreciation day or something, but we got hot dogs and we got water. Where'd you have those? Man, I'm smoking them. And they're free? Good and free. See? Lunch. It was meant to be. It was nice to sit down and have a free meal. Sometimes I think of a hot dog as a hot dog. You know, some people will actually sit down and spend $13 on a hot dog. I myself don't fathom that, you know, but to actually pull up to a Harley Davidson dealership that is giving out free hot dogs and water, it's a very tasty hot dog. Yes, it's a big delay and we're not real happy about it. Robbie's really, really upset about it, but I've learned just to roll with shit. It's not how I seen the day going, but free hot dogs, you know? So I meet Greg, the tech here at the Harley dealership. He just happens to have a soft tail fender that he's been trying to sell and nobody wants to buy it because it is a very motorcycle specific part. He's got a soft tail that he did the exact same thing with and cut the struts off and it bolts right here. He lived a couple miles away. He took his lunch break and ran and grabbed the fender, came back, put it on Robbie's bike. The way that I've done my soft tail is I've cut the struts off of it to give it a more low profile look on the fender. And he just happened to have a fender that is designed for a soft tail with the struts cut off. I mean, it bolted right up. It was made for that. So did you buy this fender or did you make it? No, I came on my bike, just got it a couple weeks ago, oh. rebuilding it, passing it along, somebody else in me. Awesome. Saving the day, man. Oh, man. You're not really going to see it once it's on. Right. We're going to put the bag back on it. It's going to look like the original fender, just a different color. Oh. I don't even know what to say. I mean, it was uh, like the stars aligned in this moment. We broke down three miles from a Harley dealership. The people were super cool. I've never had this good of experience at a Harley dealership. And right now, I'm smiling, man. I'm stoked because I'm walking away from this better than I went into it prior to the breakdown. You want to see Robbie's tire? That's his tire. It was the best case scenario you could ever ask for. The groove that Robbie's fender had cut in his tire was so deep, I don't know how it was still holding air. I have no idea how that tire was still holding air. Could have been really, really bad. Well, we could be at the hospital instead of the Harley dealer. 
if we were not to catch that problem in time and he had a blowout in that back tire, there was a number of things that could have happened. But I guarantee you, none of them would have been good. And thank goodness for my hand like reflexes. When they pulled my bike out, my first thought was, these bastards washed my bike. I appreciate it, but I don't wash my motorcycles. <laughs> I looked at the fender, and it was, uh, it was kind of mismatched. It, it didn't really go with the theme of my bike, but it, uh, it worked, you know? And it actually gave me a little bit of extra back support, which was nice. It, it worked out great. The New Orleans thing is, is what's keeping me going on this leg of the trip, and uh, I can't wait. I want to get some crawfish. I've never been to New Orleans. I want to eat some crawfish. To be a mile from a Harley dealership that happened to be open and be able to service his bike that day, to happen to have a guy that works in there, to have a fender, which is an oddball, crazy aftermarket fender that would fit, I mean, I can't make that up. You know, there's no way to plan that. It was incredible. It was just one of them, well, this is where we're supposed to be, and I got to sit inside in a nice comfy couch and spend some time, you know, relaxing for a little bit. It wasn't a day off in New Orleans, but it sure wasn't that bad. Hey, I'm here with Jeff Garner, owner of Starting Point Real Estate and producer of Tattoos and Turnpikes. Guys, we buy houses, we pay cash, we close fast, any condition, any price, anywhere, 314-333-5555. Coming in New Orleans was awesome. There was some cool art down there, cool historic looking buildings and historic looking houses. Just a whole different feel to that whole city. Cruising through downtown, crossing the Mississippi River, I had this feeling of a connection to home. I grew up out on the Mississippi River. It's kind of a weird feeling looking up that river and being like, man, you know, St. Louis is right up there. Today we're heading to Art Accents in the French Quarter, home of tattoo legend Jackie Gresham. We get to this new tattoo shop, we pull in, and there's this big freaking Indian that looks like Belly Bear. What's up Dave, man? It's good to see you. How are you, bud? It's great to finally meet you, man. I'm so happy y'all are here. I read the horse, you know, I know him from the horse. I felt like I'd already known him. It's like we'd been friends, we just never met face to face. I heard y'all had some trouble on the road, huh? here in Houston here. We had a situation, but it yeah. worked out great. All right. Took a little time, but we met some new people and gained some new friends. And, right. and well, look, man, we're here at my master shop, Jackie Gresham. Um, she's the first female tattoo artist, uh, female black tattoo artist ever in America or anywhere for that matter. So this is the only tattoo shop in the French Quarter that is sanctioned by the French Quarter. I cut my teeth here. I tell you what, man, let's go inside and meet her. She's Can't wait. working right now. Right How about let's that? Let's do that. Okay? Let's do it. I was so stoked to meet her, I couldn't wait. Just to shake her hand and introduce myself to somebody that's been in the industry that long, I mean, I don't care who they are. Hey, Jackie, what's up? Hey, how are you? I what's see. What's up? Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Pretty good, pretty Give good. Give me a hug, I've seen you all over the Facebook. Yeah, right, every now and then, huh? Good to see you. Good to finally meet you. I was looking forward to meeting Jackie. She's been tattooing long before tattoos were acceptable. You know, tattoos haven't always been acceptable, and just in the last, you know, 10 years have they become a whole lot more acceptable. What, 11 days before you're 70? Is that what you said? Not 11, I got 18 months. 18 don't, months? Don't do me like that. <laughs> oh, that's it's what coming you said. quick. You know? That's awesome. You know, but I'm still here, still doing the tattooing every now and then. Right on. Well, today you are. Yeah, today I am. I wanted Jackie to tattoo on me just because she's probably not going to be tattooing anymore or much longer. She's tattooing less and less and less and doesn't do much tattoos anymore. This is kind of my, uh, you know, every pawn can be a king, you yeah. know, and the FTH goes with that for me. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to incorporate it in up here somewhere. Okay, we're gonna, uh, I got a couple little drawings, but we're gonna make, probably make a few well, other drawings. If we have to move it, then we'll move it or whatever. Well, I, I, I draw a little bitty because I didn't know exactly what you wanted. So <laughs> right. we'll make it big, yeah. you know? I just want to be able to say I got tattooed by her. You know, she's a legend. Five years from now, nobody's probably gonna get tattooed by her. I wanted to be that person. I wanted to sit down and, and share that experience with her. So, you're the first black person or first black female to have their tattoo license? I think I'm probably the first black person. I think now they back in the early days there's some couple of uh tattoo artists with the title black something but I hadn't seen any black people tattooing really yeah. you know. 
black people did not get professional tattoos. Black people here always got hand stuck tattoos and there's a difference. And I believe that's because black people didn't tattoo, you know? Right. And at the time I got in here, it was only basically white men tattooing and bikers at that. You are you old enough to remember that? You don't. You're not no. that old, huh? No, I'm. I'm 39. A baby. I'm a baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna do it like this. I'll let you do whatever you want to do. Okay, here we go. This is what I see. What do you see? That looks fine to me. No, it don't. We gotta move it over. <laughs> <laughs> right when you walked in. Five feet off the front door was this raised up little cubicle area, like a reception desk, and that's where she was sitting at. So then when she went to tattoo on me, she didn't move. <laughs> she sat right there. Wow. Been my station for almost uh, 40 years. Yeah. She's got this little, nice little sweet lady that runs around. Her name's Faye. Faye was a trooper, man. She was fast on her feet. Every time uh, Jackie needed something, you know, she was in there. I don't know if she's on the lamb or what. Wait, you, if you blink, you'd miss her. And she's been with Jackie forever. And uh, it was cool to see their relationship. So Faye set up this makeshift station right there where she was, and that's where she tattooed me. Look at you, you're not tensing up. I no, 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 I was trying to hold my arms steady. Are you sure? Okay. No, I'm good. Okay. In an industry that was so, especially back then, predominantly ran by men, how did you end up become a tattoo artist? I think it was really an accident. If you, you know, when I, when I was- That's a, how Dave became one. <laughs> I mean, uh, I've always liked to draw and stuff like that. And I was training to go to be an architect, and then I got laid off from General Motors, so we came down here. Of course, back then, you could count all the women who tattooed in the country on one hand. Right. So basically, I just, I got to tell you, I just kind of lucked out. I think it helped me being a female, to be honest with you, because yeah. you know how you men are. You're no good. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. Oh, we're so, no good. Uh -huh. So. And you love us. What's that make you? I do. But I used to, let me tell you, when I got in this business, I used to tat, well, the people who got tattoos were bike clubs, you know. The guys, they just used, basically, they would only use a couple colors. And when I got into it, I started putting a lot more colors in it. I might do a rose with four, at least four colors in it. The light green, the dark green, the uh, red and pink, you know, right. stuff like that. I wasn't doing nothing fancy like they're doing today by no means. This woman, I just thought, man, what a strong woman. She's just a badass. Dave, yeah. how's that feel on the wrist? Oh, neat. Feels neat. Neat? neat. That, that's the best word you got is neat. Neat. Be a man about it. <laughs> what do you want me to say? It hurts like hell. Say, hey, it hurts. Now this part's pretty tender, I think. Pretty tender. <laughs> That's, it's, a, it's a word you could use. <laughs> so I walk in the shop, man. It's just loud and crazy, that whole party atmosphere. And you're looking at these pictures of her from back in the 70s, hanging out with bikers and tattooed people back in the day was awesome. I thought that she was actually a very attractive woman. She had some nice long legs, and she looks like she was really pulling it off back in the day. I always had the big dog, and I always had my ass hanging out. That's how I made it. <laughs> That's how you made it. Now I gotta have a little bit of talent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So what's the deal? Who's tattooing you on this trip? A bunch of people? Yeah, we're, uh, I'm only getting tattooed by four people. Robbie's getting tattooed by a couple. Red Dog's getting tattooed by a couple. We're all okay, good. Okay, so everybody's getting, coming home with new tattoos. Yep, yep. Okay. When you first started tattooing in New Orleans, was it difficult? You know, because tattoo shops haven't always been uh, an acceptable yeah. establishment. It was called, when we rented the place, it was called a uh, an art studio, graphic arts. You never, ever said you were going to make it into a tattoo shop. You know what I mean? Yeah. What is it about the tattoo industry that you love so much? It's kept you around here for 40 years. The people, your customers, even, and, and your, and the, and the artists actually, but you know, I'm on a hate thing with the artists because I don't think they, uh, they're not as dedicated as I would like to see them. If you're an artist in this industry, there's no way that that lady can't inspire you in, in some way or, or fashion. You think you got a hard way to go and you live in a big city with a whole bunch of tattoo artists, look her up, I guarantee your road is not that hard traveled. The thing I dislike about the uh, youth today is, uh, 
You can't tell them anything. Am I right or wrong? Hey, man. Okay. <laughs> there's a bond that I have with my customers allow me to change their body forever, and there's a bond with the people that tattoo on me. What do you think? I like it. I think it goes with the design. I, I think it does, too. Okay. She's just got an old school, I do what I want. You know, she's been around long enough that she does whatever she wants. If you can give me one piece of advice as far as being a tattoo artist, what would it be? There's more to being a tattoo artist than just the art. You gotta understand your client if it's possible. When you're a tattoo artist, it's, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but what I'm finding is the personality is supreme over the art. If the person likes you, your art becomes beautiful instantly, automatically, pretty much. The deal is to care about what you do, and that'll bring you through. That's what I believe. You know? It was a really cool story. I feel like I'm that underdog that came from a bad situations and had to get myself out and slowly built up my life. In this industry, she had a few strikes against her and she made herself up to a shop owner in the French Quarter and the only tattoo shop in the French Quarter. It's outlawed to have a tattoo shop in the French Quarter. Okay. The French Quarter Commission said no more tattoo shops in the right. French Quarter, it, but you know, she could stay. Yeah, yeah. Great I'm, I right. am actually, it used to be the center line of Rampart Street. Now they have moved this to be part of the French Quarter. I give a lot of respect to uh, someone who's been in the industry that long and someone who's actually had to cut her teeth through being a female, especially like back in the 70s when it wasn't so easy. I mean, she was there from really the beginning of, of tattooing becoming popular till today. Super genuine person, man. When she says something, she means it. She was absolutely a great host. I think I love you. Oh, good deal. <laughs> I really want to spend more time with Jackie, so I can't wait to come down here. I'm gonna guest spot down here. She's just uh, a wealth of knowledge and, and she's happy. I want to soak up some of her enthusiasm. You know, I'm in New Orleans. This is all new to me. You know, we just take off walking on foot. Spacey was very familiar with the area. He actually grew up there. He was gonna give us this little tour. Along the way, we see this guy playing, the street performer. He's playing his guitar and singing. He sounds pretty good. Then you'll see that bull that hunts beneath his sheets. There's a couple, like, three guys sitting behind them that, like, just look dirty, and they're street kids, man. My name's Kyle. Bit. Just trying to get back home, man. I need to go hit shrimp and season to make some money. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, yeah. music, you know, it's not a very lucrative thing. It's a labor no, of love. Like bucks there's plenty of love right here for it. I'm a musician, and I hadn't had an opportunity to touch a guitar on this entire trip. I can't stand a singer. I can't stand a song. I can't stand being home. It was a really cool experience, you know, to be standing on a street in the French Quarter of New Orleans playing some music. They ask us what we're doing there. We're telling them we're traveling around. We're stopping by different tattoo shops. And this dude pulls out a credit card out of his wallet. We turned this card from that tattoo shop. It says TNT Tattoos. And he goes, I found it up by the Dragon's Den. I didn't know who to turn it into, so I just kept it. That's actually who we're going to meet. Who we're I going to find the what? job. I'm ready. What? Whatever his intentions were at first, he actually gave us the credit card. This dude's from Mississippi. Is he badass? Badass. He's like, well, can you give this to him? I said, I'll take you to meet him. You can give it to him yourself. And when we get there, Billy's at the counter trying to pay for his food and can't find his credit card. Oh, wow, that's awesome, man. Can you do hug? <laughs> well, that is just what I'm talking about, how things just keep on happening. Like, you couldn't make that up. Two whole plates of food. Do you want to eat some food? There's something wrong with it. Come on in. Then it made sense to me why he was dirty and he had long nails and pretty furry in the face. He was a werewolf. <laughs> you know, I wear a tail if my spirituality, you know. He's a wolf too. How we walk down the street with this guy and I never seen the tail, I have no idea. It turns out that the vampires and werewolves are constantly fighting for territory. They, they f people up that are not of the same group. The subculture politics of the city is just so intricate and like, some guy pulled a knife on me and was basically like, you're not a vampire, you're not one of us. Vampires just seem like they're not happy all the time. I met a werewolf and he was a, he was a nice werewolf. 
Spacey ended up taking us around as a personal tour around the French Quarter. Apparently he lived on the streets in New Orleans, so he had a lot of knowledge about it. A lot of these walls, like you see across the street, oh, you think, well, man, I could jump over that. Well, you go try to do that, man, because they've got broken bottles and glass all attached to the top of that wall. So as soon as you jump up there, you're oh. going to be headed to the hospital. No. Spacey is the New Orleans Crocodile Dundee. Like, he has no concept of time, but I don't believe he has much concept of direction, neither. Uh, this, this area that we're coming into right now is a real iconic area. You know, New Orleans has been known for being a party place. It's also, yeah, and voodoo, seriously voodoo. And that, and that brings me to this, a spiritual place. A lot of people, when they walk down Bourbon Street, you know, they're partying and stuff. They'll casually look to the right and they'll see, uh, they'll see the upswept hands up here of this uh, sacred place and it stirs your soul. We see this two-story bicycle, like one of them crazy, it's like a BMX bike, but he's got everything extended to where he's 10 feet in the air. Attached to it is this 10-foot double-decker trailer. I had a blast. I got stuck on top. I guess I was the only one physically fit enough to climb up there. Hey, be careful. Hey, give him my drink. Denver was actually drinking at the time, so for him to get up there drunk, that means that I could have climbed up on there. He did a wheelie. Oh, man. Hammer down. Somehow he's able to pull us through and navigate. Ah! <laughs> I was in the danger zone. I don't know if this is probably legal, man. Ironically enough, it was my phone that almost killed me. Careful, Denver! Whenever it was time for him to dismount, the graceful swan that he is, he hops off and his phone in his pocket gets caught on the railing of it. phone got stuck in his But I landed on my feet, like I always do. Gold medal f***ing material. This little jaunt of our trip has been pretty exciting. New Orleans is one of the destinations I was looking forward to most. This town has so much history, and the history rolls into the tattoo community as well. Man, New Orleans has been awesome to us. Big day of proofs. <laughs> All right, let's go this way. I gotta go in this bar and get a drink. I really do. I'm gonna go with him because I like drinking too. Hey, this is Big Dave. If you wanna stay in touch, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button for all new content.